A spooky narrative written and narrated by students. Andy stopped dead. Did you hear that? She whispered. Sam shook his head even though he heard the blood curdling scream coming from the old abandoned hospital. The next thing he knew, he was chasing after his sister who went headed for the hospital's front door. It was an old country hospital that was more like an old sagging house than a place where people went to be healed. As they stepped through the door, it slammed shut and magically became boarded and nailed. Sam grabbed onto his sister and began to shiver. Andy patted his shoulder. The dark and dusty room was cluttered with leaves, tree branches, cobwebs, and boxes. An opossum ran by and Sam screamed. Andy laughed. They needed to get out, but how? There's a flickering light down the hall. Maybe it's a way out, she said. Arm in arm, they headed toward the light. The closer they came to the light, the stronger the smell of rotting eggs and milk became. Their eyes watered and their stomachs churned. And that's when they discovered a circle of candles. In the center of a candle stood a very large, tall clown, dressed in wrinkled blood scrubs, I mean, wrinkled blood stained scrubs. He raised his arms and chanted. Sam gasped. Then the clown doctor turned. His name tag glinted in the light, Dr. Clowning. Oh boy, they both gulped. Dr. Clowning was a legend. It was rumored that he was a crazed doctor who tried to create new life from dead bodies. It was also rumored that he had died at the hands of one of his monsters many years ago. Just as they turned to run, the door doorway was blocked by a giant two-headed body with mismatched arms and rotting flesh that oozed slime. Sam darted to the left and Andy darted to the right and slipped on the goo. That's when Sam remembered something from all the news articles that he had read. Andy, he shouted, sing. The monsters have sensitive ears. Andy put her hand on her hips Sam, I don't think singing is going to help. We have a crazy Dr. Clown to the right of us and a lumpy stench of a monster to the left of us. He shouted for her to trust him and the monster moaned and clutched his ears. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light, she sang. The monster fell to its knees. No. Dr. Clowning, who became to fade. More groans echoed throughout the house. Together, she and Sam darted around the now very mushy puddle of a monster back to the front door, which was now wide open. Puffing and gasping for breath, they ran through the open door and down the sidewalk. They didn't stop until they were a block from their home. The dark streets were crowded with trick-or-treaters. Sam and Andy had had enough for one night. They hurried home and promised to never talk about what had happened. The end.